Okay, dokie guys, so this is KP, uh, it's not too much to do with this, it's very kind of similar to KC, uh, the only difference being that it's these two extra equations to learn. So first one to, and just bang these straight on flashcards, boot camp them, look, cover, right check, repeat, 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 that kind of idea, is to find the mole fraction. This is basically the percentage of your gas moles that are the chemical you're talking about. So a mole fraction is the moles of your desired gas, the gas the question's asking about, divided by the total gas moles. That's a really important thing with KP. We only really care about the pressures, really, and so it's all about the gas moles. Liquid moles, solid moles, aqueous moles, don't care about, it's the gas moles. You can essentially ignore anything which isn't a gas, essentially. So first thing to do is mole fraction equals desired gas over total gas moles. Once you've got your mole fraction, we can use that to find the partial pressure of that gas. Now, partial pressure has the symbol small p. We find that by taking the mole fraction and multiplying that by the total pressure, which has got the symbol large p. So just remember the difference. Total pressure is large. Your partial pressure is smaller, which always kind of makes sense. If total pressure is the whole thing, that will always be bigger, so a larger P. So let's go through an example of this, and let's try and find the partial pressure of A in my uh, equilibrium here. So 2A gas reversibly goes to B, which is a gas, plus C, which is a solid. And I've just written the number of moles at equilibrium underneath, and I've also given you the total pressure of the system, you know, 50 kilopascals. So to find the partial pressure, first of all, I need to find the mole fraction. So my mole fraction of A <coughs> is equal to the moles of my desired gas, which is 10, divided by, well, have a little think. What will be my total moles underneath? Well, it'll be 25 because we do not include the A, because this is a solid, not a gas. And that comes out as 0.4. Once we've got that, we can say the partial pressure of A is equal to our mole fraction, 0.4, multiplied by the total pressure, which is 50. And that comes out as 20. We do need units for partial pressure, though. So if your total pressure is in kilopascals, then your partial pressure will be in kilopascals. If they gave you it in pascals, dead easy, just convert you, write your answer as pascals. If they gave you it in atmospheres, ATM, then just pop your answer in atmospheres. If you need to convert, one atmosphere is 101 kilopascals. But usually, just whatever they give you the total pressure in, you can just bang your answer in the same unit, so it's dead simple. So that's how we find that. Once we've got all of our partial pressures, we can use that to make a Kp expression and find the Kp. So a Kp expression, and in an expression, it does need to start Kp equals. So if you don't include this first bit, you'll set a really good chance of not getting the mark. So do start at Kp equals. And that is equal to the partial pressure of your products raised to the power of their big number in the expression, just like in KC, only in KC we're dealing with concentrations, so we would use square brackets, raised to the power. With KP, it's all about partial pressures, not concentrations, so you cannot use square brackets. If you use square brackets, you've lost the mark. We have to use these circular, well, rounded brackets, and that just means the partial pressure of P, of the products of P. Raised to the power. We're going to divide that by the partial pressure of the reactants raised to their power as well. So in this expression here, there would be a squared there. Okay, let's go through it. So what have I got then? Well, my product is B, so Kp, let's not forget that, is equal to the partial pressure of B. I'm not going to include C, because again, C is a solid, so we can ignore that. And we're going to divide that by the partial pressure of our reactants, A, raised to the power 2, because of the, the molar ratio, the stoichiometric ratio. So that would be my Kp expression. 
Now, when you're doing these, be really careful. You have to make sure that you apply this expression to the chemicals in the question. So you can't just say partial pressure of products over reactants. You have to actually write in the actual products and reactants in the question. Okay? So all, that's a general rule in the exam. Always apply the things you've learned to the specifics of the question. Now, in terms of units, each of our partial pressures, well, let's say our partial pressures was back in kilopascals. Each of our partial pressures has the units kilopascals. So that will be kilopascals, because I've only got one, over kilopascals squared, because of the two. So let's cancel these down. Again, it's very similar to uh, Kc, only Kc is moles per decimeter cubed because it deals with concentrations. Cancel that down, so that will give us 1 over kilopascals. And in maths, you can flick something from the bottom of an equation to the top by reversing the sign of the power. So this would go to kilopascals to the minus 1. So for this uh, Kp equilibrium, the units of Kp would be kilopascals to the minus 1. So stop the tape now. Have a go at these three, write some KP expressions, and do have a try at that, you'll find that really useful, it'll help you remember it so much better. Once you've done that, restart the tape, and I'll go through the answers with you. So, restart the tape. I don't know why you said that, if you'd paused it, you wouldn't hear me say restart, but anyway. So, our KP expression for this one will be our products, which is B over our reactants, which is A, and that's going to be squared. Our Kp for the second one, well, our products is B. Our reactants are solid, so we do not include them. So I don't have any reactant terms, so we basically put the number 1. But anything divided by the number 1 is just the same answer. 10 divided by 1 is 10, 7 divided by 1 is 7. So you can essentially just miss that out. Okay. And then finally, for our, our bottom one here, our products, again, we don't have any products, which are gases. So we just put the number 1 over our reactants. So that's the partial pressure of A multiplied by the partial pressure of B. A really common mistake is people try to add these together. That's not how it works. It's not how it works with Kc, and it's not how it works with Kp. You have to multiply them together. Okay, so that's the basics. What I've got on the board over here is quite a long question, just to get a bit of practice at it. Probably take you five minutes to do this if you're quick, ten minutes if you're not that quick. I would try it, you'll find it really useful. It'll help just locking all these ideas into your head. So if you can stop the tape and have a go at finding mole fraction, the partial pressures, and the Kp for this equilibrium here, which is the contact process. So stop the tape. Welcome back. So first of all, you can't actually do this question. Now, if you had done it, that's fine. But technically speaking, you shouldn't have been able to do part C. Sure, we can find the mole fractions. Sure, we can find the partial pressures but you cannot find Kp, because Kp is an equilibrium term, like Kc. It only exists, you can only find, it doesn't only exist, you can only find Kp using the partial pressures at dynamic equilibrium. Now, I never said that this system was at dynamic equilibrium. I said I had this many moles, but I didn't specify it was at equilibrium. So your answer to part C should have been, no, I, I can't find it, I don't know. If I'd have started the question at equilibrium, then we can do it. So that's a really important concept. You can't just bang in any moles numbers. You have to wait for your system to reach equilibrium before you find your mole fractions and then your partial pressures. So, assuming it was at equilibrium, a little bit of me writing up here, so kind of bear with me. We've got our mole fraction of SO2 which is the moles of SO2 divided by our total moles of gas. So let's double check a really good safety net, just double check, is everything a gas? Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so my total moles of gas is the sum of everything. But do check that, because quite often there'll be a cheeky solid or something in there. 
Just FYI, if everything in your equilibrium is a gas, then everything's the same, so the same, so we say homogeneous. This is a homogeneous equilibrium. If you had a mixture of different physical states, two gases and a solid, a gas and a liquid, anything like that, well, different, that's hetero, so heterogeneous, that would be. It's the same with catalysts, same kind of idea in terms of naming. So, let's bang in some numbers. My moles of SO2 was 1.5, total moles is 2.75, which equals, I'm just going to round everything straight away to three sig figs, because that's the minimum amount that the question goes to, so that's what I should go to. And that's going to be 0.545, mole fraction of O2, 0.75 over 2.75, which equals 0.273. And our sulfur trioxide, little revision task, try and find the shape of that. Try and figure out what the shape of that is. Think about the bonding pairs and lone pairs, or bonding regions and lone pairs. Uh, so I've got 0.5 over 2.75, which equals 0.182. So that's all my mole fractions. Hopefully you managed to calculate them too. We can now apply them into our partial pressure equation. So partial pressure of SO2 is our mole fraction times by the total pressure, which was 900 kilopascals. And that's going to give me... 491, again, units will be kilopascals because that's what they gave me the total pressure. Do check that though, it could be in atmospheres, could be in pascals, could be in whatever. So my O2 will be 0 0.273 again times 900, which equals 246 kilopascals. And then sulfur trioxide, trigonal planar shape by the way, three bonding regions, zero lone pairs. And that will equal 0 0.182 times 100, which equals 164 kilopascals. So there's all my partial pressures. Now we can do part C, and we can do it because these partial pressures were obtained at equilibrium. So let's start our expression. Kp is equal to the partial pressure of SO3 raised to the power 2 over the partial pressure of SO2 raised to the power 2, because there's a big 2 there, multiplied, not added, multiplied by the partial pressure of O2. So feeding in those numbers, we've got 164 squared over 491 squared multiplied by 246. Bang it all in a calculator. If you're not good at using your calculator, and that's fine if you're not, don't try and do it all in one go. You'll mess it up, you'll miss a brack out, it'll all go horribly wrong. And with KP, because it can vary massively, it's hard to tell whether your answer's sensible. With pH, it's quite obvious. If you get a pH of minus 70, you've gone wrong somewhere. If you get a pH of plus 70, you've gone wrong somewhere. It's not really the same with KP, so you need to make sure you type in these numbers correctly. Now you might think, oh, I'm not going to make that mistake. You'd be amazed when I'm marking papers how often people get exactly the right numbers but the wrong answer, and it's just because they've typed it in wrong on the calculator. So if you're not good, do 164 squared, write the answer down. Do what, uh, 491 squared, write the answer down. Then do the answer of this divided by those two. Just break it down a little bit and show what each of you are working. Either which way, popping this in a calculator correctly gives you 4.54 to 3 sig figs times 10 to the minus 4. In terms of units, I've got two terms on the top, so that's kilopascals squared, and I've got a total of 3 on the bottom, so that's kilopascals cubed. Let's cancel them down, so that's going to, 2 there is going to cancel that 3 to a 1, so that's 1 over kilopascals. You can take it from the bottom of the equation and flick it to the top by reversing the sign of the power. So that's kilopascals to the minus one. You get some proper weird units with Kp, kind of like Kc. And that, guys, is partial pressures.